Um, the answer would be both, actually. The evolution of the cult could have been a lot longer. You know, the, the, I didn't publish that book. Uh, cult Never Dies didn't publish that book, obviously. So I was given a maximum word count, and that meant that certain bands and chapters couldn't be included, which, are, you know, is fair enough because... You know, I have. You know, I run a publishing company now, and I have to sort of occasionally tell authors. You know, you need to limit it to this amount of words. Um, but it, yeah, that obviously meant that there was more of the story to be told, and so the books that have followed have been telling that story. And what you what that question also asks. The other half of it is also true, you know. the The main story of kind of the history side of it was told, and it, you know, I wanted to look more in depth into bands that I had only mentioned in passing in Evolution. So I think if we look at black metal history, obviously the key the key years are really, let's say, the mid eighties to the mid nineties, um, or maybe the late nineties. I mean, that's the formative years of the genre. It doesn't mean that all the best music came out in that time. Um, but it's just when it, that, that was kind of the most important years in terms of what black metal became, because it's the formative years and the formative years of any genre are the most defining in terms of where it goes from there. You know, that's the foundation of it. So I think now, I mean, it's, I mean, evolution of the cult kind of mainly focuses on the years 1980 to 2000 ish and the way it did that was to tell the story of the genre as a whole um but also to look at individual bands who had a big impact and the point of looking so in depth into those bands is really to tell their story and to you know really um analyze their discography uh, and tell a story within a story if you like and so the books that have followed have been doing the same thing with bands and scenes that didn't get the exposure they deserved or had I had space for in evolution. So one example would be, in the first book we mentioned Satyricon. It's an important band, but we didn't have room for a whole chapter on Satyricon. Um, but in the first sequel, you have 10,000 words telling the whole story of Satyricon with interviews and you know a lot of interview uh, material. So that was one example. And... Poland, as we've discussed, had a whole scene which is explored in the in the sequels. Uh, there was um, a chapter on Polish black metal within Evolution of the Cult, and there were Polish black metals interviewed, but a lot has happened in Polish black metal since that time. It's had a whole new wave, so it was really important for me in the sequels to talk to bands like Maguire, uh, Blaze of Perdition, and uh, other kind of uh, second generation or third generation black metal bands, as well as bands like Sacrilegium uh, and other 90s bands who I just hadn't, Masterfell, you know, who I just hadn't really had space to talk about in detail. So, yeah, I think really I consider the uh, Rotting Christ book to be part of the black metal series because even though the book is, you know, obviously about the history of Rotting Christ. A huge part of the book is really about the history of Greek black metal, and although that's touched upon in evolution, if you want to really learn about Greek black metal in the 90s, you can do a lot worse than to read that book. And I think that's something we'll expand upon with um, another, you know, we'll have more more books uh, talking about Greek black metal and that, and that scene in more detail, but... Uh, yeah, so I think uh, all the black metal books moving forward would be probably written around the same format, both because people like that, but also because I like it as a writer. I think it's the best way to tackle the subject. Now, you have books that are specifically about different scenes, for example, USBM, Devil's Cradle, which is the history of Finnish black metal. And uh, these books, are, I think, are really valuable. I can say that because I don't, you know... I'd, I didn't have anything to do with them, so I, I can say that from an unbiased point of view. I think they're good books, and they um, they serve a really important purpose. Uh, and they talk about those scenes that we touched upon, but you know, didn't go into detail on. And to be honest, they use the same structure. And I know that those guys, the authors of those books, um, they have read Evolution of the Cult. Uh, maybe that influenced them. Maybe it didn't. But either way, they've used that chapter, you know, book. Uh, structure where you have one chapter per band and I think it's a very good way to to really 
explore the history of anything uh, musical because each band you know has its part in the wider story of their genre but they also have their own individual story which impacts on um, kind of what comes later and is also interesting in itself so yeah that's the format I would use but I don't know if I would write another book about black metal which had so much of a broad look as evolution you know evolution had chapters which broke away from that band uh biography structure and you had you know for example a chapter on folk black metal and a a chapter on uh underground black metal against mainstream black metal and all this sort of thing so i think that was a good that was the place for that really but but um whether whether i would do that again i'm not sure So I'm very proud to have our books translated into Czech and uh, that's a kind of an interesting thing and a bit of a leap of faith as an author because obviously I don't speak Czech. So I entrust entrust people that I think will do a good job to to translate that and hopefully carry my voice and the way I told the story as accurately as possible into a different language. And because I don't speak that language, I sort of will never know exactly how my voice sounds uh, and how my editorial um, is translated. I guess it would be quite interesting to speak to somebody who has read the English edition and the Czech edition, um, and they might say, well, you sounded, you know, slightly more formal in one than the other, or you sounded, you know, they they would be able to sort of spot those differences. But um, yeah, I'm really happy to have these books in, in different languages, and we've had quite a lot of translations um so far we've had french edition books we've had german translations uh japanese czech obviously polish russian uh well, American, you can say. There was obviously some differences made for, for the American uh, editions. Um, strangely, we haven't had Spanish or Portuguese much, uh, which is kind of the thing that we get a lot of demands for, because obviously South America has people speaking that who would like to read the books in that. So I'm kind of, that's the only thing that surprised me is that we haven't had more. Um, requests for Spanish and Portuguese. That said, we have uh, the Rotten Christ book will be available in those languages. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I was sort of surprised. I thought that would come first, but actually, we had um, we had other countries and other languages that came first. I, it would be nice to have a Chinese edition because we can't very easily export our books into China. But um, in fact. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of legality about about books in China, so I don't even know if they could have legally a book about black metal in China. Are you? Yeah, that's something that would be interesting to look into. But yeah, it's it's fascinating to see it. You know, even just uh, to have these. Obviously, each publisher that does a translation, they send me a couple of copies, and I have them, you know, on the shelf together. And it's quite interesting to see how people change the layout occasionally, or just how the, the 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 chapters look in a different language especially the japanese one obviously that looks totally different and the russian edition has different um different alphabet as well so yeah it, it's really it's really good and you know there's there's no doubt that certain countries don't really read english books um we've never done a translation to norway or sweden or finland and we probably never will because they all read english better than a lot of the people in england so they're quite happy to just, you know, to buy the books in English, and there wouldn't really be an audience for a publisher to translate them. But, um, you know, Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Japan, these are countries where you can see on our web store we sell a lot of uh, we sell a lot of vinyl and um, CDs t- to those countries, but we don't send many books. So it's really helpful to have partners like yourselves who can bring this to the people um, living there. And uh, yeah, I'm very thankful for it.
So that's quite a big question. Uh, the answer would be that there definitely will be more black metal books, but the question is when, because in the last few years I've been so busy with Cult Never Dies, both as a you know as a mail order and wholesaler, but also in terms of editing other authors' books and releasing other authors' books. So in the last few years, I've mostly been busy when it comes to books with doing the design for books like uh, Rotten Ways, The History of Finnish Death Metal. That would be the most recent. Um, so the amount of time I have to write uh, books is quite diminished at the moment. The last book in the Black Metal Saga is depending on how you look at it, uh, Black Metal Into the Abyss, which was um, the second sequel. And then you've got Cult Never Dies, the magazine, which I would consider to be part of the series, but also it deals with non-black metal subjects, so it's kind of a bit of a wild card, um, although I really love that book. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a little bit hard to place. And as I say, the last uh, book that I would consider part of the series would be the Rotten Christ book, um, which came out at the end of 2018. So that's two and a half years ago. Um, no, actually, it's, yeah, two and a half years ago, um, coming up for three. So since 2018, no, in fact, from since 2017, I have been writing another book in the series, which will be essentially, uh, well, it, literally, actually, it'll be Black Metal, Cult Never Dies, Volume 2. And a lot of the chapters of that are written, however, a lot of them are not written. And I don't know when I'm going to have time to finish that. Um, those books that follow will be in the same format as um, Cult Never Dies Volume 1, so essentially collections of interviews with bands but based around a central theme, so while those books had depressive black metal, Polish black metal, Norwegian black metal as their subjects, this one would have other countries and other scenes. And uh, it's just a matter of time really, um, but I would like to be I would like to be doing more of them, and it's a tricky one because I really enjoy working with other authors now and helping them get their books into print, and, you know, I enjoy doing layout. That was kind of my day job for quite a while. I enjoy editing, and we also have other writers uh, who are now editing for Cult Never Dies, so... With Doom Metal Lexicanum 2, which is coming out fairly soon, that was actually the first book that's been edited by somebody else, um, and that's Alex de Moller, who is uh, known for his extensive work in magazines like Zero Tolerance, and so I'm excited to kind of have somebody else on the team who can get, free me up a little bit more to maybe do more writing, um, and I really hope that I can release a book in the next year of some description i don't think it'll be it's hard to know what format that would take um there's also work started on a kind of cult never dies fanzine um so maybe some of the interviews will go in that and some will go in the cult never dies volume two it's a little bit up in the air at the moment but yeah to answer your question that's the sort of format they would be based around and i'm not sure uh i think perhaps it is too soon for another book or as an overview on black metal you know i think perhaps there will come a time when you could have a black metal evolution of the cult too and you could talk about things like you know the nidrosian black metal scene or the orthodox uh, black metal scene, um, the modern U.S. black metal scene, what you know, the, what post-black metal has kind of become, um, this new wave of, uh, I would say, black metal bands who sound like black metal but perhaps have slightly different values. Uh, there, there are developments to be made, but at the same time, you know, the developments in the first twenty years of black metal's history, i.e., nineteen eighty to nine, you know, two thousand. Um, they're going to have so much more in terms of sort of form, you know, defining um, 
significant changes and events that I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure you could really do black metal 2000 to 2020 without that also being mo- mainly a focused on uh, interviews with bands because there haven't been as many formative events um, but you know at some point there will be time for another overview and um, whether it's me or somebody else who writes it uh, I'm sure there would be an, an interest in that but I think for the moment I probably want to keep going and uh, yeah turn the black metal cult never dies volume one two three you know make this sort of a series and uh yeah hopefully i'll have the time to do a bit more of that but um as you can probably see with cult never dies when if anything we've got more projects on our plate than ever before so you know it's a bit of a balancing act but um you know fingers crossed I think the short answer is no. I kind of made the decision with Cult Never Dies as a publishing house that I would like to have um, books covering other genres within metal and the underground scene in the same way that I have with black metal. But I don't think I'm the right author to do that. Um, you know, I I sort of... I would hope to say that I'm quite a self-aware person and I feel like I have the knowledge and experience uh, of black metal to be the best person to be writing those books or like, you know, one of the best people. And there are others as well. But I think when it comes to death metal and black metal, there, uh, sorry, death metal and doom metal, there are other people who are more knowledgeable and we're very lucky in a sense that we have them a lot of these people involved uh, with Cold Never Dies. So I mentioned before the Doom Metal Ex Carnum books, and um, we published the first one three years ago, uh, and it's by a Russian author called Alexei Evdom... I always get this surname wrong, but it's Evdokimov, Alexei Evdokimov, uh, and he's uh, fantastically knowledgeable about doom metal he's i guess as dedicated to doom metal as i am to black metal um that's not to say i don't listen to doom metal because you know i'd listen to all genres of metal um well not so much power metal but you know all genres of underground extreme metal uh but you, you know you only have so many hours in the day and i don't think it's a good idea to try and spread yourself too thin so i think he's he's got that level of knowledge and dedication and uh, he's written three books actually in the series and we're just about to release the second one Um, but he's a machine he's written I guess about a million and a half words on the whole genre and uh, or perhaps a million but anyway a lot you know a lot and yeah I think we could also do books about death metal Um, but again I wouldn't probably be the person to write that even though i listen to a lot of death metal uh would i like to write books outside of metal again i don't think i'm necessarily the person to do it a lot of my listening uh i mean i listen to music most of each day because um you know i can listen to music as i work and there's a lot of genres that i'm really interested in you know punk um death goth rock uh, even stuff like um, uh, contemporary urban Jamaican music and, uh, you know, ska and all sorts of music, really. I, I, there's very few genres of music I don't listen to, but I, I'm i sure there's people in those genres who are more involved and more knowledgeable or have a better position to do that. And I think, again, I wouldn't want to spread myself too thin, so... Probably I wouldn't write books on them in the meantime. However, you know, I'd like to think that I'll still be writing for a, a few decades, and maybe later down the line, I would write. Maybe I, I would write something about um, maybe something not even about music. I don't know. I don't. There's definitely room for writing about other things. But as I say, I do try and I, I do try not to write or start any project 
um, that focuses on a subject that I don't feel like I'm, the, you know, the right person to be handling, or that I have the right level of knowledge. And you know, I'm probably a bit critical of some writers who write about black metal without really knowing what they're talking about, and so I have to kind of apply that same strict um, criteria to myself. You know, sh should I write a history of doom metal just because I listen to a lot of doom metal? Well, not really, because I don't have, you know, that would be a stretch, and I don't have the sort of history within the scene in the same way that I do the black metal scene. So um, if I can justify writing about something else or covering it in a way, you know, maybe I would write about an individual doom metal band that I really like, just to use that, that example. Um, but yeah, you have to have the right people for the right job, and I think one thing I feel very... Uh, thankful about with Cult Never Dies is that we've kind of attracted writers and people who are experts in their own field and uh, I would hope that we'll continue doing that and continue to release definitive books about different subjects written by the people who should be writing it and not kind of outsiders who are just kind of hop on the bandwagon so yeah that that's sort of where I stand with that. Uh, thank you very much for the interview and thank you much uh, for our continued cooperation. As I say, I'm very happy that you are spreading the word and publishing these books um, to the readers in your country. Um, yeah, thank you for that and uh, we shall speak again soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you.